Uh, what's up, guys? Andrew Goldfarb here from IGN. I'm here with the crew from Irrational Games. If you guys could go around and introduce yourselves. Uh, I'm Sean Robertson, animation director. Uh, Amanda Jeffrey, I work on List Squad. I'm John Abercrombie, I'm a lead programmer. Yeah. Ken Levine, creative director. And we're here looking at uh, kind of one of the first moments between Booker and Elizabeth in Bioshock Infinite. This is uh, quite early in the game. Uh, you, you've just fallen out of the tower where Liz has been trapped, and you're waking up here on Battleship Bay. And do um, you guys kind of want to set up what we're seeing here? Yeah, this is, you know, Elizabeth has, you almost drowned, and Elizabeth has revived you from near death on this beach, and she's, um, she hears music, and she's just been busted out of her prison for the first time, and the music is very exciting to her. You kind of weave her away. Yeah, so you, you, you give her permission, you give her permission to go, and something that's, that was interesting, you see yourself getting up here like a short moment later, is originally we didn't have... We didn't have this scene in the game. The scene was actually a scene between you and this this couple here, where they, where they, where you woke up and you were talking to them, but Elizabeth wasn't there. But it was it ended up being very strange because people got mad at Elizabeth because you weren't. She didn't seem to care that you had just nearly drowned, and so we went in the opposite direction very late, and we added. Um, here, just uh, slow down for a second, John. We, we added. We brought Elizabeth into the scene and gave have Booker give permission to her to go, um, which was um, which was critical to making you like her, so because you didn't feel just abandoned by her. Um, you she, want... she only moves off once she knows that you're going to be okay. Yes, exactly, and refuses to it <coughs> until you do. I mean, this was our this whole beach was sort of a we spent probably more time on this beach um, than any other part of the game because this is the first time Elizabeth is actually fully interactive and you'll re-encounter her in a minute. But the other experiment on this beach was this is the first area of the game we had really populated with people and figuring out how they were going to work because every time, you know, there's all these animations that Sean had to put in, they, there was all these lines we had to write for them. Yeah, you quickly um, learn that putting two people into a conversation only takes you so far because then you're putting a huge burden on their writing team to come up with all these crazy conversations. So you, you gotta girl. dig deep into the well of what people can do when they're on the beach. And you'll see as we go through here. And we kept it kind of snappy, um, each of those, but but almost all the characters on the beach have these little exchanges, and sometimes you have to go searching for them. Um, there's some kind of pretty funny ones, pretty some kind of um, some kind of um, naughty ones, you know, buried deep there. Some offensive ones, but you, it's all up to you to find them. And we don't force you to that. It's it's a, it's a small simple moment, but that's one of my favorite moments actually in the game is when you see the uh, the umbrella yeah, blow. Right. One of the uh, uh, animators just put that in without me knowing it one day, and it, it, I totally loved it because it just draws your eye over to where you want to go. Which is where with the Elizabeth is over here. I try not to f to force you that direction, and you get to and you're still like she's fairly she's scripted here obviously where she's sort of doing her thing, but this is really the last moment we have. In the game where where we have total control, where we this is where we lease control of her basically, and this is where things got scary for us. Yeah. Hey, Miss, Miss Elizabeth. Hello. Oh, this yeah, this scene was originally done um, with a uh, complete hand key, but I wasn't happy with the amount of energy that was being put into it uh, from Elizabeth. So I wanted her to move around the screen more and be, you know, have this energy of her just coming off the dancing. So. Um, this is one of the first scenes that we actually mo-capped and uh, started developing our motion capture for the body and hand key for the face. I'm sure you guys get a pin in your stomach right now because this is where the fun starts. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, we did this so many times, it's, it's absolutely ridiculous. Like we just spent so much time looking at this beach and watching, watching Liz, uh, how she moves around on the beach, what she does on the beach. Like, and as you can see right there, she's starting to find things to do. And she's doing a balance beam act on the edge of the stairs, and then. And you want to you want to talk about why she did why she did that and how that works? Sure. Uh, there she's are, doing something else. There are a bunch of uh, what we call opportunities on the beach for her to do. So she she has uh, a number of things all across the beach. Not not that every player will see every one, but uh, she'll interact with things. She'll look around at certain things. She'll play idle animations like the one she's doing right now. And uh, in general, she'll try to stay in front of us as we move along here. Um, but if we stop and we go off in the other direction, she'll, oh, excuse me, she'll stay with us. And then, of course, she finds things to do, something to look at. She's taken in the view of the beach. Um, 
Yeah, this is this is pretty much like a playground for Elizabeth. So this is the first time she's been out for Tower. All of these people are possibly the most incredible things that she's ever seen in her entire life. So she, she's listening in on you know the conversation of these two ladies, you know, because she's never had the opportunity to eavesdrop on people before. And if you had just zipped ahead to the stairs, which is a eventual goal, she would have just followed you, and you would have missed all this. You would have seen that. So she has so many different things on this beach that she can interact with, and the player can just move from place to place or find things to be you know collecting themselves. They can, you know. Enjoy seeing what Elizabeth is, you know, experiencing on this beach for the first time vicariously. Or they can just decide that, you know, like the gruff booker that he is, you know, he's got a mission and he needs to get out here with the girl. And if you had run off up towards the um, to leave, she would catch up. But she she would she would realize you were leaving and and and, and, and go and go with you. But if you give her the opportunity to, essentially, she'll start doing all this interesting stuff. And this is all pretty, pretty custom, and you know, getting this to work. Like, how, I mean, how long did it take us to get her just to skip those rocks properly without, without automatically doing them every time? Weeks upon weeks. There was so many times it went horribly, horribly wrong. She would end up sprinting over there, you know, long before you had even considered that you wanted to be there. Or other times she would be stood back there, skipping the rocks while you were deciding to leave the entire beach. So why is she, why is she looking at that? Um, like, like, how did you make her care about that guy up in the, uh, um, the the lifeguard? Like, well, everything on the beach has been marked up to be more or less interesting. So there are all of these hidden, invisible symbols underneath that say, "This is an interesting person. If you want to look at this person, you're going to be fascinated, or you're going to be disgusted, or you're going to be amused." Uh, there are also other things in the world where I think, John, you were talking about opportunities where she'll decide that there's something in the world that we've placed that she can actually interact with. So, for example, here, she's having a look at the inside of this boat because, you know, she's never seen a boat before. This is the first time she's ever seen one. So we've populated this entire beach with all of the different things that she can do. So looking at the, the surfboards or, you know, paying attention to the man who's, you know, being the lifeguard there or skipping the rocks on the beach, these are all things that we've placed in the world and said, if you have time, if you're not doing anything else and you haven't just done something, Maybe you want to do one of these things. And we want to make sure she's not constantly running in front of your camera and getting in your way. Um, these are all challenges, and basically we hit we hit every single possible bump you could possibly <laughs> hit along the way. And Liz Squad and you and John and everybody who works with you, it seemed like your job was to. Well, my job was to sort of break it. <laughs> I'd play it. You guys would come in thinking it was like all done and perfect, and then I'd do my magic act of. Of, of, of destroying it by just by playing it because I am I am I'm job. living bad luck, <laughs> and um, and then there are some things that you know we, eventually we just punted on because they didn't work and some things that we we kept adding and we kept finding new opportunities but it was mostly just getting her just to do these sort of basic functions we had to, we have what we called uh, if you ever see seen that movie Up if you remember the dog the squirrel yeah um, from where sometimes Elizabeth would get the, you get that sense where she was just distracted by everything. Um, and even and that happened in, in in scenes like this and on on the beach scene originally when the music started playing, she her reaction to the music like Booker sat there sitting there drowning and and she had a bit of a squirrel music. moment. <laughs> she music, like, oh, and she turned her head right away. And so like you know there are subtle subtle cues that come out that um, we kept having to to push on, but um, the way it ends up though I really like how she stays with you uh, no matter what and then if you start moving she starts breaking towards the eventual exit from the beach and it just no matter what you want to do if you want to go off and explore she's with you she's going to come back and stay with you and she'll find things to do you know no matter where you go if i want to search over here um, i can take everything and turn around and look she's she's off to do find do something and later on when we deal with this we have to deal with it where there may be combat going on as well booker yeah. does not is not doesn't get into combat here um sean how was it hard how hard was it just like getting her to run making that look right given because yeah the, the running is a difficult thing because as a first person player you don't really realize that you're probably running about 50 or 60 miles an hour in any, um, in any first person in any first person shooter so making a human being run that fast was a bit of a challenge because you immediately lose that illusion if, if Liz is pumping her legs fast enough to run at 60 miles an hour here let's head up into the uh, go up to see the new tests a lot of you know the 
going back to all those animations that we're doing, it was good fun to provide all these animations to the design team and then be surprised at how they used them because a lot of them were used in ways that I'd never intended but were actually better than better ideas than I had thought. Here's an interesting hybrid moment because there's a narrative bit here where she, see, she sees this Comstock thing, but it's in the context of the player could do anything. We don't lock the player in place, um, but we wanted that moment where she first sees Comstock because he's such an important figure and she reacts to him. And then one of the guys, the, the man, the, the guy who runs the store reacts to her. And, and that was all, um, you know, that, this is where it got really, started to get re really interesting. And then once you introduce combat, it was, because the player is just so unpredictable. Um, so like if you think that Liz was a bit of a, a squirrel fan, the player has, you know... <laughs> the ultimate squirrel. Yeah. Totally, yeah. And then we have this moment where, you know, she, you encounter these characters and there's this interesting kind of interaction that happens. Which most sort of men have had this experience of, of shopping with, with their girlfriend or wives or and being asked their opinion on an article of clothing. So we um, decided to make a game out of it. That's right. <laughs> and my, my wife saw the scene and she like punched me in the arm because she was like, because um, we have these moments sometimes. And, um, but we thought it would be fun for you to actually better choose what Elizabeth was wearing during the course of the game um, to have a little bit of agency there. Um, and you know, and this is a moment of drawing the player's eye, you know, so you see this tower burning and we use Elizabeth actually to draw your eye towards towards that by I don't know if you saw her face right there got concerned yeah uh, yeah her talk, about, talk about emotions yes yeah, so we have we have different emotions that we can put on Elizabeth depending on um, what the narrative calls for and emotions can change her facial expression they can also change the uh, the way that she stands and the way that she walks so we have these emotions that she can enter in and out of throughout the game depending on the, the situation that calls for it this is another one of those situations again where uh, we've marked up the environment to say, no, really, the burning and you know crashing tower is the most important thing for you to look at in this scene. And her head is constantly yeah. tilted that way, even as she's walking, and then she keeps turning back to it. And it's incredible, you know, from a psychological point of view, how just seeing other people in the environment looking at something will draw your eye to it as well. It's just built into humans. I think that gives you a sense of um, gives you a sense of, of of Liz roaming the free world and and, and how we how how we dealt with it. Yeah. And if if you'd wanted to, you could probably have got through this whole section in you know, fifteen twenty seconds or something. Like that. And we've seen that, and, and our yeah. hearts break into <laughs> tiny little pieces. But that's that's what it is. That we with the gamers, you know, the gamer is allowed to do that. That's it's their game, mm -hmm. and we, and we and we want to. Um, we want to make that happen. Huh. This is one last little cute moment, I guess. We wanted to right away to show, <laughs> um, wanted to show Elizabeth um, that she wasn't just a babe in the woods; that she had a lot of book smarts for being in the tower. So you come across this locked door, and Liz immediately surprises the player by seeming having a little more deviousness than you might think, and all that kind of book smarts comes out through the course of the game um, substantially. And just another thing that makes her an interesting character. Well, awesome, guys. I appreciate the time today. And uh, for all things Bioshock Infinite, keep it locked to IGN.